you went from cleaning toilets to the biggest radio station in the Middle East. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. <laughs> this Sydney Lebo from Riverwood has a Madame Tussauds that wax is figure. Off its head. Oh my god! I'm sitting there with a microphone. I've got His Holiness right next to me, the Pope. Like he's about four meters away from me, and I'm like, who was one particular celebrity that you really didn't get along with? And I'm sure there's a lot of people you do get along with, and a very few that you don't. I, it wasn't I didn't get along with him, but it was the I'll tell you. Uh, Let's talk about the Bob Bling. I want to know what happened between you and DJ Bliss. As I said on the camera, there wasn't, there, for me, there wasn't just one incident. I want to test your Aussie knowledge. Oh. You know, you, what, you've been away for what, 16 years? Who's the current Prime Minister? The changed. The Prime Minister has. Man, like, it's a pretty crazy story. Like, going back to that, like, you went from clean toilets to the the biggest radio station in the Middle East. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. Uh, and and you also got your own, what, Waxworks in Madame Tuss Tussauds? Is that how you pronounce it? This Sydney <laughs> Lebo from Riverwood has a Madame Tussauds <laughs> wax figure. That is off its head. Oh, my God. It's, I can't believe that. It's crazy, it's man. It's actually freaky how accurate it is. When, like, they, when, the, when the Madame Tussauds wax guys emailed my manager, she forwarded me the, the email. She says, take a look. And I read it and I go, nah. Someone's playing a prank on me. Yeah, wow. One of my mates is playing a prank on me. And it wasn't until I flew to London, because I flew, to, you, you don't have to fly to London, but they, they like you to fly to London, because when they actually, when they create a wax work, it's amazing how they do it. They take about like 4,000 photos. It's crazy. And they take, like, it, the funny story was, I wasn't training. I was not as fit as I was. And they told me, we're gonna do this in four weeks. We're gonna fit. We're gonna cast your body in four weeks. I was like, oh my gosh! I better get to the gym. I better get to the gym. <laughs> I was training like I was a professional athlete because I was just trying to get as ripped as I possibly could because I knew that they're gonna start measuring everything. Of course. And then so when they measure you for a Madame Tussauds wax figure, you know you sit on this round circle that's got all these measurements on it. You're only in your underwear, and you just stand there. And you stand there for about four hours. Is it a machine that goes around you? No. It scans yeah, humans. your body? No. It's seven or eight people. Oh. And I'm telling you, they measure 98% of everything. <laughs> I was wondering if they were going to measure everything. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> you know, and so they look at skin tone. They, they lift your gums down and they have a gum chart. They look at your gums. You're kidding. They look at your teeth. They look at your eye color. Like they'll bring you, they'll open up like 20 eyeballs and they just start matching. It's crazy, man. That's wild. And it wasn't until that moment where I was like, wow, I'm getting my own wax figure here. That's awesome. You know? That is awesome. And they only chose- I love that. They chose three people from Dubai when they opened up the Dubai Madame Two Swords. They only, choose, they only chose three people from the country, yeah, the UAE. Yeah. And I was one of them. And it was like, that was a moment where I sort of pinched myself and went, I don't know, like, I don't know if it's like, oh, you've made it, but it was just, everything for me is always about my family. Like, of course. Yeah. Man, uh, mum and dad are going to be proud, you know. Mm. And then, then when they saw that for the first time, which we actually shot on the, the Dubai Bling Netflix show, like just to see mum and dad cry when they saw their son as a wax figure, like it's a pretty special moment, you know. Oh, 100%. And you, you'd have a lot of pinch yourself moments as well. Like you've interviewed that many stars, you know, Will Smith – helped you with your marriage proposal. Like that is just crazy. Yeah. The Rock, Kevin Hart, Paris yeah. Hilton, Kim Kardashian, Ronald Dino, the Pope. Are you kidding me? You interviewed the Pope. It's crazy, yeah. <laughs> but don't you think like, that's just, I've, I've, I've got to rub shoulders with these people. Like, do you kind of take that into perspective? Yeah, like I think with everything, like, and again, it's just not my career, but in, in whatever that you do, whatever you're doing, like try to celebrate the smaller wins. And that's something that I haven't done enough of. And, I, and yeah. I told myself last year and this year that I want to make, just make sure that I pause for a moment, yes. enjoy those moments, 100%. move on and continue. But I think it's important for all of us to just pause, enjoy, enjoy those little wins. Because as humans, we tend to be negative, right? We look at the negative sometimes. Definitely hard before. on ourselves, I agree. And you'll know this, like you put something on social media, you'll get 900 messages of source, I love you, you're the best. Oh, you're the best person, I love you. You get that one that says, I couldn't stand you. I used to struggle with that. And what do you do? Yeah. You focus on that one negative. Because I, I always used to be a people pleaser and I always treat people with respect. You know, I make sure I don't tread on anyone's toes. And when I get a comment like that, it's like, makes me think like, what the, what the fuck did I do to you? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But after a certain period of time, I've kind of developed a thicker skin and realized 
end of the day, you're not going to please everyone. You just can't. It's just impossible. No you chance. could be the nicest person in the world, but there'll be someone out there that just does not agree with you. It's there'll just impossible. always be someone out there that will never like you. Yeah. And they don't want you and to And it win. is what it is. And, that's, and you've got to just move on. Correct. And again, be it if you're, you know, working a regular job, uh, there's always going to be someone in that team that's not going to like you. So... You know, I've just learned now just to to roll with it, enjoy those wins a little bit more. Mm. Um, you know, you said it like the Pope, when they asked me to host the Pope's um, visit to the Middle East, it's like, man, I had a hundred and, I think there was 110,000 people on the outside of the arena and 40,000 people on the inside of the arena. I'm sitting there with a microphone. I've got his holiness right next to me, the Pope. Like he's about four meters away from me. And I'm like, oh my gosh. You get nervous? That, that, yeah, I got nervous then. Mm. I don't get too nervous when I'm doing celebrity interviews. Um, the Rock, I did because I idolized The Rock. Well, I was about to say, like, what, out of all those people I've mentioned, or even possibly the ones that I haven't mentioned, which one stands out amongst the rest? Will Smith for me is pretty legit. I've, I've caught up with him many times. He helped me with proposing to my wife, which he didn't have to do. Um, he's a good guy. He's a great guy. I know a lot of us look at that slap that he yeah, that happened, I was about to say. which I hate because that's not him. If you know Will Smith, man, that guy's a legend. I've been with Will Smith in rooms where there's no cameras around, and the guy is just is a genuine, real human being. Like, and he's loving and he's caring. Um, the Rock's another one. I've been in, I've been able to hang out with The Rock a little bit. Um, he's just another guy. You you know when you see successful people, there is a pattern. There's a pattern, and I'll tell you right now, the biggest celebrities in the world. They're there for a reason. It's not an accident. It's the way they talk to people. It's the way they, they handle their friends. It's the way they communicate. Um, whenever I interview the big guys, they're usually one person around them only. Um, they're very polite. They're punctual. Mm. You know, I, remember, I remember I flew to Turkey to interview Jennifer Lopez. Wow. And she's on a – well, she was with, with one other person on time – my wife loves her. Yeah, she's beautiful as well. Like she's a beautiful person physically, but also just her aura. She's so, a strong woman, man. She, oh, she's lovely. But like on time, gave me everything I needed and was just amazing, you know. And I thought to myself, and you see that pattern, you know, with these A-grade, A-class celebrities, they're all pretty much the same. It's the B graders, the C graders, the D graders. They're the ones that come with an entourage. They're the ones come with their ego. They're the ones that aren't as nice to you in person. They're the ones that will sit down and be like, hi, how are you? Come on, let's get this done. Oh. You know? And it's those big, it's the biggest, the biggest names in the world that are, and you realize that's why they're there. Well, I'm glad you brought it up because that was my next question. <laughs> it was, uh, who was one particular celebrity that you really didn't get along with? And I, I'm sure there's a lot of people you do get along with and a very few that you don't. I, it wasn't I didn't get along with him, but it was the, I'll tell you, uh, Floyd Mayweather. So I've interviewed him a couple of times now. Okay. But the first time was he was doing a club appearance in Dubai. Don't ask me why he has to do a club appearance. I don't know. He's got that much cash. Okay. So he's doing a club appearance 2 o'clock in the morning. I would never do an interview at two o'clock in the morning. I don't usually go to and do interviews. The interviews will usually come to us. Two o'clock in the morning, a bit of awkward time. But so. it was Floyd Mayweather. It was at the time when him and Conor McGregor were just about to uh, have that fight. And I thought, I'll go do this interview. I wanted to go out as well. It was at my mate's club, which is white in Dubai. It's one of the biggest clubs in Dubai. You'll be taking me there I when I'm there. A hundred percent. I said, let's go out and have a good night. So I took a few friends with me. We had a table. We we're enjoying the night. I knew at two o'clock that Floyd was going to, I'm going to go back and do a quick interview. So two o'clock comes, I go back to the sort of VIP back end area yeah, where it wasn't. And Floyd walks in and he says, uh, he's got his backpack and he's there with one other guy. And he says, the guy goes, oh, he's got to do a quick uh, radio interview with uh, Chris Fade. And then he's like, why do I got to do a radio interview for? I don't, I don't do interviews on the radio. I don't, I don't need to do an interview on the radio. Mm. Now, there it is around 2.30 in the morning because he rocked up a little bit late. I'm thinking to myself, man, did I just, did I just rock up at 2.30 in the morning? He's going to bounce me. So I've learned in my career how to handle egos. And the best way to handle an ego, if you've got a boss who's got an ego, play to it. Play to their ego. I like that, yeah. So I just said to him, Mr. Mr. Mayweather, for you to do this interview, 
I understand it doesn't mean much to you. I get that. But for me and my career, not only will it do good for my career, but it'd be an absolute honor to interview you. You'd be a highlight. Different person. And that fed into his ego. Mm. And that's what he needs, Floyd, at that time. He goes, all right, we do this. I give you three minutes. Don't ask me about UFC. Don't ask me about Conor McGregor. Let's go. So I went, cool, let's do it. 20 minutes later, he's still talking. <laughs> I have wrapped up the interview. Yeah, yeah. And in that interview, he talked about UFC. <laughs> he brought up Conor McGregor. And we had a great interview. And at the end of it, what I did appreciate was he said, sorry about how I spoke to you at the beginning of this interview. Wow. And I said, Mr. Mayweather, don't even think about it. Thank you so much. And he left, right? You're doing all right if that's the worst kind of encounter you've had with a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, like I think, yeah, I don't, I don't give, oh, the other one, the worst one I actually had was Jake Gyllenhaal. Do you know Jake Gyllenhaal, yes, the actor? Yes, actor, yes. I had to fly to London to do an interview with him. It was him and Ryan Reynolds. Yes. It was Ryan. for some space movie. I forget what it was called. Ah, uh, yeah. Was it Interstellar? No. It tanked. It was a horrible movie. Was it Intent? No, it was, it was tanked. I oh, said, like, sorry. it tanked. Had two stars on. Like, it was a horrible movie. I know which one. I've watched it. I, yeah. yeah, I've watched it. It didn't do well. Mm. So, for me to fly to London from Dubai is about a six-hour flight. I will miss one of my radio shows, which I don't like missing radio shows. you got to jump on the flight. you got to stay at the hotel. you got to go watch the movie in London. You're not allowed to interview these guys until you watch the movie. Mm. So, I had to go watch the movie, um, come back to do an interview. Now, the interview was with Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal. Ryan Reynolds missed the plane, didn't get to the interview. It was Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal on his own. Now, no disrespect to Jake Gyllenhaal, but I probably wouldn't have flown halfway across the globe to do the interview just with Jake. You only get four minutes, right? There was meant to be eight because it was going to be Ryan and Jake together. Yep. Because it was just Jake, they gave us four minutes. I'm like, damn, I got four minutes. I've flown all the way. Anyway, let's go. This video is on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> Can't wait to watch it after this. Yeah, but I just, all I said was I sat down, I said, you got four minutes, right? You got a camera crew, you got someone with a stopwatch. That's how they do these junkets sometimes. And I hate doing a junket interview. I usually say no to them. Um, <clears throat> they go, all right, Chris, your time starts now. Jake Gyllenhaal, just watch the movie. Wow, unbelievable. He replies, wow, that's, that's what you say about the movie, wow. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like. How did you respond to that? I'm like, what the F, man? What's wrong with him? Like, why is he saying that? For yeah, me? yeah. Did you think uh, you were being sarcastic? I don't know. And I'm like, I, no, it was a great movie. It was fantastic. Uh, you know, I'm trying to just <laughs> trying try to see. <laughs> anyway, I ask him a question. He spends about two and a half minutes on purpose, I know, uh, answering that one question, Right. He finishes that question. The girl goes, time's up. Oh. And then he ends the interview was like, wow, that interview was wow. He, he, he used my line on me. And I remember just walking out going, thanks, thanks, mate. And I walked out and I thought, you know. What? I don't want to use, I don't, I don't use profanity yeah. right now, but yeah. I was like, what are, you know. Yeah. Like, why would you do that? No, I, yeah, I can't understand that. Like, why That's, would you do that? Like, I've flown... You must have got him on a bad day. I don't know. Like, <laughs> doing these junkets for them is not easy because there's a bunch of interviews that got to... They've got to do this back to back. Yeah. But I'm like, why would you do that? Like, I walked out, I thought to myself, I just flew six hours from London. Perspective, exactly. Da -da -da, just give me a little bit. Yeah. It was the... And then I got to go back and play that on my radio show, right? Like, to play that, to go and do all that, and that was the interview. So he was probably my worst interview. And I have heard from other people that... They've had similar experiences, which mm. is interesting. Because I love the guy as an actor. Like, I love him. I think he's a great actor too. Oh, he's an amazing actor. He's Like, he's cool. But that just left a bit of a, a sour taste in my mouth. Let's talk about the Bob Blink. Okay. Okay, yep. so, you know, you got me into the show. Obviously, you, you've been on it. Uh, me and my wife have... Really invested a lot of time into the I know, show. You WhatsApp me, <laughs> Josh. He WhatsApps me like, "Hey, what's going on there? Did that really happen? What's going on? Is that real?" Hey, to your credit, you're very fast with your reply, so I'll, I appreciate I'll, that. I'll reply to you. Are you always comfortable like uh, being on the TV show? Like, has it always been something you were? Nah, at doing, doing a um, doing a reality TV show is not fun. Yeah. It's not easy. Um, you really gotta be sure you're ready to do one. I, 
in my career, especially when it comes to radio, you're, I'm in control of what comes out. You know, what comes out of my mouth, that goes into a microphone, that goes to everybody. I'm pretty much in control of that. When you do a reality TV show, you have zero control. You actually sign it. You sign a document that says whatever they capture, they can use. So we definitely won't be saying like keeping up with Chris Fade nah. type of reality show. Nah. <laughs> Unless I'm producing it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I've got total control, bring it on. Yeah, exactly. But um, it was when 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 we got asked to do the show, I, I initially I had said no, I don't want to do it. We didn't know the name of the show. There was no name to the show. Okay. It was just a reality show coming out of Dubai. It was going to be on Netflix, which is obviously one of the largest platforms in the world. Um, did you want to be in it? We sat down. I did a casting interview over Zoom, and I was pretty sure. Like they were asking me, like. You know, tell us about your life. They knew a lot about me anyway, but, you know, what brands do you wear? And uh, when I started hearing that, I was like, oh, this Sorry. ain't for me, I think. You know, I'm, I'm cashed up, but I'm not the guy that needs to be rolling in Gucci and Dior and showing everybody what Showcasing I got. Showcasing it. You know what I mean? I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't, half my, I'll go to, I'll go to Kmart now and buy, a, buy, I got half my underwear from Kmart, bro. Like, I'm, 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 I'm proud to say that, Yeah. you know? That was actually a funny moment because I picked up like 20 pairs of this t particular underwear that I buy from Kmart yeah. and I'm at the queue and then this lady goes, oh my gosh, Chris Fay from Dubai Bling, can I get a photo? I'm standing there with my $4 <laughs> a pair underwear going, yeah, let's take it, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, I said no to it initially, but then, you know, they kept saying, oh, it's not just about bling. It's not just about, you know, what you're thinking. Yeah. There's going to be a show involved. And so eventually spoke to my wife, who's totally not on the camera, like she's never done this before. I said, you want to give this a go? She goes, babe, whatever you think we should do, you do. And I said, okay, let's do it. Next thing you know, we start filming for the first season and um, we find out it's called Dubai Bling. And I was like, oh, I don't know about that name. And then the first season comes out, um, obviously a lot of drama but became the biggest production out of the Middle East in history. Went number one in over 70 countries. Um, it definitely changed my life. People knew me when I came to Australia before the show. Like yeah. I'd get the odd hellos and haze. Obviously in the Middle East, I'm pretty well known anyway, but this show, doesn't matter where I go. I'll be in LA, I'll be in London, I'll be in India, I'll be here in Australia. People just stopping me every like it it the the power of that show was pretty crazy. Well, this time last year we went to what, dinner to Mr. Wong's and stuff. Yeah, there. and we're talking about this, and I don't think you actually understood where this show was going to take you. I don't think you yeah saw the big picture of this show. Like, well, I just didn't realize the magnitude of it. I yeah. think because it had just come out, and it was you know Australia was the first country that I traveled to outside of of the UAE, um, and it's just become a show where obviously season two's out. And again, it went top 10 in America, which again is very difficult to do. I don't think people realize what it is. Obviously, it's a it's a show that's around reality. It's around drama. People ask me all the same questions. Is it all real? Pretty much it's real. Is it scripted? Not from my end. You know, the biggest thing that I get told is thanks for, you know, you're the most relatable person on the show or you keep it so real. I want to keep it as real as I possibly can. I don't want to exaggerate my lifestyle. Mm. I want to keep it pretty much as it is, um, I want to showcase who I who I am as as a proud Australian Lebanese guy. Mm. I want my parents to be proud of it. And you know, after the two seasons, I can sort of look back and go, I think I did all right. You know, my wife's happy. I mean, there's some moments on there that I'm I'm so glad we shared them because I have 4K or 8K quality produce of my wedding. Like they filmed my wedding. I've got that on Netflix forever. I film. My wife told me I, this is a spoiler, but my wife told me that she's having a baby on season two. That was legit. Yeah. Like I had no idea, and we had agreed. My wife and I, we don't keep anything away from each other on these shows, like because you know there's producers involved and they and they're good at what they of course, do. Of course. But I was like, babe, whatever happens, you and I, we always tell each other what's going to happen. We always keep ourselves in the loop, and we agreed. When she told me she was pregnant, she never told me. And I'm glad she never did. It was pretty obvious. You were yeah, in tears. <laughs> I, was, I was in, man, because it was, yeah. you know, if anyone trying to have a baby, Brianna, you know, this is her first child. I've got two kids from a previous marriage. <laughs> and Brianna wanted to have a child. I was ready to have a kid. But within two months of trying, I was getting a lot of pressure from Brianna. Like, babe, maybe you should go get yourself tested to make sure that, I'm like, honey, we just started trying to make a baby can sometimes take a year. 
people don't realize it's not easy to make mm. a kid, yeah. right? Like there's certain days and there's yeah. all this, all, it's, you know. Oh, no. The, yeah. You know what? It, it becomes a job. It's a science experiment. That's what it is. Mm. So, you know, she started putting a bit of pressure already on me. And this was some of the narrative on the show. It was real. It was really happening. And eventually I said to her baby, like, listen, you know, after six months, if we're trying and we don't have a baby, um, I'll go get myself checked up. All right. Don't just, I promise you. She said, okay. It was only about a week later that we're filming that scene. And it's our one year anniversary from our wedding. And um, you can see this on one of the episodes on Dubai Bling. And I just, I opened this box and I'm like, I didn't know what, like, initially I was like, is she, is she lying because she thinks this is a good storyline? No way. Like, I wasn't sure because it was the pregnancy test which said, and that's when I looked at her, I said, are we pregnant? She's like, yeah, I'm pregnant. She's pretty early, but, you know, she goes, yeah, I'm pregnant. And for me, like, again, capturing that moment on a reality TV that's been, you know, it's, it's crazy. You know, I'll be walking the streets in LA and someone will say, man, congratulations on the wedding. You know, I'll be like, hey, thanks, dude. Like now walking around Sydney. That's unreal. Congratulations on your son. That's unreal. You know, from people that I've never met before. You know, like oh, that, that feeling is crazy, you mm. know, like it's such a, it's a surreal moment. And for me, it sort of makes me feel proud again that I'm, I'm, I'm repping Australia and I'm repping, you know, us Lebanese mm. Arab men to the world. You know, we're more than what you may see on a, on a news headline. We're more than that stereotypical feel that you may, that you may think of, you know, yeah. you know, and a lot of my Aussie mates, you know, my Aussie Aussie mates, they'll message me like, oh man, I saw what you're doing out there. They, oh, we're proud of you, bro. I'm like, good. That's what I want. I want, I want you to be able to watch my story, my journey and be like, look, he's waving the flag proudly for us. You yeah, hundred percent. Because it's a generational thing. I want our kids to do the same thing. I want our kids to know that there's, there's more to life than being boxed in. You can break the circle. Mm. You can break the chain. For many of us, our family, our fathers, our grandparents flew from countries, no matter where you came from, from Vietnam to, to Lebanon, to from wherever it is, they work so hard to build a life for us and we got to respect that hard work that they did and we can break that chain and we can break the circle, be it that your family is a family of drinkers. You can break that. No, 100%. You can break that right you now. You decide what you yeah. want to do and where you want to take your life without yeah. a doubt. Like your past um, experiences and obstacles don't just um, – don't shape you into your future. Of course. You know what I mean? So – You know, I, and you, you know, from your upbringing, you know how hard it can yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, But look what you did. And then for your kids, what are you going to do? You've shown your kids that there's a different way of life. Sure. You know, and the easy way out is to say, oh, yeah, I had, didn't have a good upbringing. I didn't have a good upbringing. I didn't have a mum or a dad. Or, oh, yeah, my dad was it's an an, e it's just an excuse. Yeah, my dad was an alcoholic. That's around. why I'm like this. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's... It's bullshit. Yeah, it is. That's the cheap way out of it. Mm. You know, you can, break the, you can break the cycle. And I love seeing men and women break the cycle of their family for the better. I think that's most inspiring. 100%. Do you find, you know, the filming for the show and into reality, like, can you separate yourself? It, you know, it can get really close pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Brianna and I have had arguments about like my wife 100%. and I have had arguments about things that are happening on the show. One, there's one thing that we take for granted and it's privacy. And yeah. there's no such thing as privacy no. these days. Like, and they know it's... and they see it. I mean, I share a lot of my life on my social media anyway. Um, follow me, Chris Fade, by the way, if you're not. Um, <laughs> I want to hit that. I want to I want to get more followers out here. <laughs> no, but um, I share a lot. My mum doesn't like it. Mum says you share too much. I go, mum, that's the lifestyle that I've chosen. Yeah. I want to be able to share my life. You know, that's what I do. Um, it's my path. But yeah, filming on a, on a reality show and then some of the arguments that we would have on the show, there was one particular where with Fade Fit, the company, where Brianna was when, we, when she was organizing the wedding, she was concentrating more on the organization of our wedding than our company. She helps me run the brand. We were, we were missing some big things in the brand because she was organizing the wedding. We had an argument on, on camera, right, at the office. That argument really continued off camera, right? Um, so there, there's definitely some real things that, that happen. And, you know, I don't want to talk on all the other cast members, mm. but, you know, the, the beef that you see on some of the – between the other cast members really does happen. Well, I'm glad you brought it up because I was going to say, who do you gravitate towards the most to on the show? My wife. <laughs> oh, that's an obvious answer. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty tight with like you know with Safa and Zayna and 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 Fahed and Hana. Um, you know, I, I I'm cool with them. Like we we chat a lot. You know, 
Mona Katan, who's she's lovely. She's lovely. I've been friends with Mona and, and Huda um, for years. And if you don't know Huda, I mean, many of you know who Huda Beauty is and the Katan family. They built a billion dollar company out of the Middle East it's on crazy. makeup, right? It's crazy. Um, they're another family that just I look up to, and I and I say as my company Fade Fit. That's where I want to be. I want to be able to say, look at this. We built a, a billion dollar business one day. So, you know, they're the people that I, that I, that I sort of, I guess, lean towards off camera as well. Like it's off camera. It's real. Talk. It's real. You know, we have WhatsApp groups together. We chat together. Um, there's obviously people on the show that I don't gravitate to. I was going to say, um, uh, can you guess what my next question oh, is? Oh, no, yeah, go ahead. You can ask it on me. I have to ask. Yeah. I have to ask. Because, you know, I did message you about it, but you did hold back. I want to know what happened between you and DJ Bliss. What's, Listen, caused the, what's caused the tension? As I said on the camera, there wasn't – there for me, there wasn't just one incident. Um, unfortunately, you know I, – I can say that. I can def And I know the type of person you are. Like, there was one specific moment on the show where – I think you kind of got sandbagged in a way and, you know, he's rocked up out of the blue and I could tell there's a bit of animosity between each other, but what are the details? Yeah, there were, for me, there wasn't that many details. For him, we just don't run in the same circles. There has been some, I don't want to even use the word bad, but just stuff that wasn't done well from his end to people that I know. Okay. So for me, I'm by association. If, for example, someone did something not great to you, I would just, it's not that I don't like you, but I will just know that, well, this is where I am yeah. in my life. So you haven't had the opportunity to actually hash it all out? No, well, there's nothing to hash out. That was the whole issue. Mm. There isn't nothing to hash out. It's more about like, I think for the show perspective, I think he wanted to see if I was gonna help him promote um, that sh uh, that, the, his the show at the thing. No, no, like I, I, I am not. I, you're not a close friend of mine. Even a close friend of mine, I would have to ask a few things like, what do you need? How are we going to do this? How are we going to... It's a, it's a business sort of feel there. But you can understand where, where he's coming from because he's obviously had LJ sing for him and I'm sure like... LJ's just, great. You know what I mean? But then he would have come to you and assuming that he would have... I don't know. Well, if I we think had, it was a bit of an expectation that he should a, have If had. we had a relationship before, Correct. of course. Correct. Like if Mona came to me and said, hey, can you help me with... Of course, I'm there. Mona, I've known you for years. We run in the same circles. We're good friends. You know, so that's sort of where it is. Okay. You know, where, where I sort of feel in that. Fair enough. Okay. So, well, I hope you guys get to shake hands and actually have a coffee together in the near future. I'll shake hands. We shook hands already. <laughs> We've already shaken hands after that scene. Oh, that's good. That's you know, there's good. already been a handshake after all. I had to ask. And when I see him, I'll handshake his hand. Like, for me, it's like, how are you? Sweet. But you don't ever, you know, for me as well, and a word of advice for anyone, don't ever just rock up somewhere un uninvited. Yeah. Because yeah, whenever you do that, it's not the situation, unless it's a surprise birthday party. I agree. Where you're supposed to be. You I know. agree. We'll be um, seeing you on uh, season three. Don't know if there's a season three. Don't know. Don't know. So after t getting the top 10 of the US market, Netflix. Nothing confirmed. <laughs> Nothing confirmed. Well, I find that a bit hard to believe, but uh, because you're trying to fish for it, <laughs> huh? what, do, what else do you want to know? Right? There's a season. There's a season eleven coming, 2029. No, there's that'll no, be nice. No, nothing, nothing confirmed. Nothing confirmed for us. Um, Something you'd like to be a part of again? Ah, <sighs> good question. Would I want to do a season three? <clears throat> I'd talk to my wife first, get her feels. Talk to the boss, and then if I was to do a season three lightly maybe yeah i don't think i want to be heavy. i think i want to start to move on and do something else well, you've got your son now as well yeah you but want i want to kind of bring i want to concentrate that. on yeah. the business i've got the family there's other stuff that i want to do yeah you know i want to do enough. more tv i want to do more on you know globally you know for me one of the ticks to do the show was to get some exposure for who i am as a talent and i'd love to be one day be able to host a tv show here in Australia, I'd why not? That. That'd be cool. Why can't I do it? I'd love to host a game show here. You know, I'd love to be a game show. I, I could, talk, I could I, see you doing I that. I talk to Larry Emner all the time. He's a legend. I love that guy. I love Larry. Well, Gladiators just uh, came I back. Saw, you see that? I saw Gladiators. Isn't that nostalgic? I love Gladiators. I can imagine you being a host right? of that. Can you I'd love to do Gladiators. gladiators. Yeah. Give me, give me. Uh, yeah. a, what is it? Gla uh, ready? Yeah, are they, gladiators, are you ready? Yeah, Gladiators. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready to go. It. I've got to host TV shows in the Middle East. I've done a lot of hosting for TV shows. I host the Oscars. I do. I go to the red carpet. I do all the big shows there. That's why I want to come home one day. Yeah. And I and I'm I'm a guy of manifestation. So I'm putting it out to the I'll put it out to the universe right now on your podcast. Is that one day I want to be on Australian TV, um, 
doing some type of a show. I'm ready to do it, you know, like. Well, if why, you're really truly believe in it, I, I yeah. believe that will happen. And I want to be able to see, I'd love to be able to, from the outside, look in and go, you know, we, we went to the Sydney Kings the other night. The first thing I noticed is the coach is Arab. Yeah, Palestinian. Palestinian. Yeah. Just, I was like, 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 good, good. Like, we need more of that. And I want to be able to look back and turn on the TV here and listen to the radio and see more of us represent. I'm not just talking about Arabs. I'm talking about all nationalities. Mm. Australia is a beautiful country of multi multicultural people, right? Mm. I want to be able to turn on and see that representation everywhere. Mm. That's important for me. Mm. So one day if I am hosting a TV show, I want to be hopefully like on the outside going, well done. There's a, there's a Sydney Lebanese boy hosting a TV show on Channel 7, Channel 10, Channel 9. You know, mm -hmm. like that's what I want to be able to do. So I'll put it out to the universe and hopefully that can happen. I want to test your Aussie knowledge. Oh. You know, you what, you've been away for what, 16 years? So 16 years, man. A lot has changed. A lot okay. has changed. Let's see if you're a true Aussie at heart, <clears throat> okay? Let me get the paper out. I'm going to fail. <laughs> you reckon? Okay. Number one, it's an easy one. Yeah. Uh, who's the current prime minister? The change. The prime minister has changed, I think, six times. <sighs> Probably more. <laughs> Probably more. We're not gonna... Albanese. It's a very... Yes. Yeah. And he's a Marigval boy. I know he is. So you should have known you that. You know why I know that? Because as I used to drive, there's a br there's a railway bridge in Newtown yes. where he had his face for years. And I remember just driving past it and Albanese reminded me of Lebanese. <laughs> and then when he became prime minister, I was just like... Oh, that's that guy that I used to drive by and think he was Lebanese because he was Albanese. Can I say, I'm so glad you got that right because you know what? That would have hurt, huh? <laughs> yeah, it would have really hurt. Mm. Um, second one, uh, what is Vegemite made out of? Yeast. Yes, correct. Salt. Is there a bit of seaweed in it? I don't know, but I work with Vegemite in the Middle East. Can we get that fact check? Yeah, get back that there, fact please? check. Actually, Vegemite <laughs> sent me, when my son Cruz was born, yeah. He sent. they sent me... Two little Vegemite shoes with cruise fade on it. Oh, and they awesome. are the cutest little Vegemite shoes. I actually, I rep I love Vegemite. I've always got a jar of it back home. Man, I'm Dubai. a late bloomer with Vegemite. I couldn't stand it before, but now my wife got me into it. You Lots know. of butter, huh? Yeah, have to put the yeah, butter. Same with me. Have to put the butter. Same with me. But, you know, calories. So. Um, Relax. <laughs> who is the captain of the St. George Dragons, your team? They're laughing in the background. Stop laughing in the background. <laughs> He's still with us. He's from the UK. No? I don't know. Is he? I know who you're thinking of. I'm a dragon. I, I'll give you a tip. I know who you're thinking of and it ain't him. Really? <laughs> yeah, it ain't him. It's not Gareth Widdop. No, I wasn't thinking Gareth. Oh. Oh, James Graham? No. Oh. Oh, you got me rattled. <laughs> You've lost me. It's Ben Hunt. We'll be here all day. It's Ben Hunt. I was trying to get Ben, honestly. It was Ben. Yeah, okay, Ben. Number I'm a big Dragon supporter, but i got to be honest with you. The last two seasons, I haven't followed the NRL as closely as I should. You should get you back into it. Well, just the, I love the Dragons. I drove past Jubilee Oval uh, two days ago because I used to go to the games all the time. And Sizzler across the road. Sizzler across the road. Yeah. What, is, are there any Sizzlers left here? I think there's one. Where? I got no idea. Are there any? Are there any? <laughs> are there any one. pizza huts that you can go and actually sit in a pizza hut? Nah, they're a dying breed. They're a, they remember there used to be one in Belfield. There used to be one in Beverly Hills. Was there? Yeah, next to the know. Twin Cinema there. Oh, I don't remember that. Oh yes, 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 yes. So okay, uh, Ben Hunt is our captain. How do you think we're going to go this year? Um, uh, sorry to the Dragon supporters out there, but I don't think you're going to do too well. Uh, mm. I still think it's a work in progress. Speaking of Ben Hunt, I don't know how lo much longer he's got at the Dragons, but um, listen, it's a work in progress. Put it that way. Who do you think is going to dominate this season? Top three. Who do you think your top three? Uh, top three. NRL. Uh, I definitely feel like Penrith are going to be there. Um, everyone likes writing them off uh, year after year, and they just keep, you know, keep winning it. So I'll definitely have them in my top four. Um, the Roosters, I think, is going to have a, they're going to have a big year. Um, uh, the Broncos, yeah, like the old story goes, you have to lose one to win one. So I like okay. the Broncos. Um, what about the doggies? Will the doggies? Be? Doggies, doggies would be much improved. They're telling me uh, my mates are saying that they've got some big, yeah, big signings. signings. Stephen Crichton, Blake Tuff, uh, Bronson Cherry back from a four-year suspension. He'll be good for them. Um, that they've arguably got the best backline in the comp. 
There's no doubt about that. But can they put it together? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, true or false? I love true or falses. You were told you would never make it on air, but I already know that. True. True. You're yep, that's true. Me. Yep. hundred percent. I still remember the guy. I'm not going to mention his name. Don't mention it. But the guy that said to me that I would never make it on the radio and kidding. then he got fired a month later, I went and hired a video with a friend of mine at Dremoyne Civic Video. He was working behind the counter. You're joking. Nah. You're a liar. And I, no felt, way. And I felt embarrassed for him that I didn't let him see me. Like, yeah, I probably should have gone up and I hired the video in his face, but I didn't. I funny? felt embarrassed for him. Is that funny how things work out? Yeah, like never, never take anything for granted. Even when you're at the top of the game, count your blessings every day because it takes a second for it to all go away. There's a saying that I always live by, which is, you know, it takes years to build a reputation. It takes one second to ruin it all. So true. That is so true. So yeah. powerful. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's in every aspect of life too. Everything. Mm. Everything. Second one, if you were to sell Fade Fit tomorrow, would you quit radio? True or false? Never. Never. I could have sold this company already. Mm. Um, Speaking about it before, you obviously got good intentions about it and you want this long term. Clearly. Yeah, I mean, I've got a figure in mind that I'll probably let it yeah. go for. <laughs> I think we all do. If but we business. I could have sold. Man, like, you know, I'm in a position right now where I don't have to work a day in my life again if I didn't want to. If I if I wanted to hang it all up and say, dad's just going to relax now, girls, you know, we're all going to have a good lifestyle. We'll still live a beautiful lifestyle. I wouldn't have to work right now. But radio for me is something that I never want to give up. I love it. It's passion, I absolutely love. love radio. I'm on a vacation right now. I'm starting back on air on a Monday. I'm excited to get back on the radio like this. And, and I've been doing it for 20 years, which is, you know, not easy to feel excited about something after a while, you know, everything's got an end game, but I, I've learned that just recently retiring, unfortunately. Um, you know, rugby league was my passion, was my love and was something that I wanted to do forever. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you, but know. you had to, re you're retiring because it's more of a physical, I mean, it's a physical thing, yeah. you know, for me, uh, it's radio. As long as I can use my voice, I'm okay. How hard was it to, to come to terms with like having to say, I am retiring. <sighs> it was hard. It was, I'm not going to lie. It was very hard. I remember I was probably thinking about it for two months until the actual moment when I kind of put it out there to the world that I was officially retiring. It was just because, like I said, it was something that I've loved doing. Um, I'll never forget. It feels like yesterday when I was 10 years old, my first training session um, for the St. John's Eagles Junior Rugby League Club, I had this thing in my head planted. It was a seed planted and it was a dream was born. I wanted to play in the NRL. And it's, I know a lot of people have dreams and I was very fortunate enough to live out mine. And it was something that I lived and breathed every single day. I just loved playing rugby league. I loved the NRL growing up as a kid. And, oh man, it, you know, it was my life. Like it shaped me to the person I am today, you know. But what you did as well with your career was, you know, as we say, waving the flag. Like, I think I remember the first, I don't know when it was the first time I saw you play, but I, I saw, I heard Mansoor. And I was like, is he Lebo? <laughs> they're like, yeah. There wasn't many going around besides me. But like, Farrah. again, you, what, what you've done, not only just as an Arab, but I'm saying just as a guy playing NRL, you've achieved so much. How does it feel? And I've spoken to other athletes about this. I actually had a really good conversation with uh, Usain Bolt mm. um, about him and I had to go on a run together for, we were shooting a commercial. So I'm running with Usain Bolt. Was he walking? Are you running? <laughs> it no, no, I swear. <laughs> It was a jog. I was sprinting. <laughs> there's there's video of it. Oh, you gotta show um, it. And I had to tell him, can you slow down? Because one of his strides is like three of mine, and he's just casually jogging, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. But I asked him. I said, how does it feel? Because he, obviously, he when he won all the Olympic golds, I said, you've got all the the cheers. You've got the world screaming your name. You're so everyone knows who you are. And how do you how do you go from that? To just mm. back at home. And for you, you're running out to these arenas. I'll definitely miss that. Yeah. So have you found a way to, because for athletes, it's very, very real. Mm. Depression can kick in pretty quickly. Mm. Have you thought about how to handle all those feelings? Because when you're at a top, I love that you're doing a podcast. I love that you're doing everything else that you're doing. Cause I think that keeps, keeps Keep you busy. very, very busy for mm. you. Because if you were to stop, that's when it really hurt. That when it really hurt. So have you thought about ways to how do you deal with it or I I probably hit man, I'm a pretty positive person, I like to think. You I, are. I think I hit probably the, the hardest point in my life, my last year at Souths. That was a pretty difficult year for myself. 
uh, I wasn't diagnosed with depression, but if I was to tell a psychologist what I was going through, they'll probably gone. Yeah, tick, you, tick, tick, tick. I just, tick. I don't know. Like I struggled to sleep at night. My mind was always busy, um, not in a good way. Uh, I was just having constant negative thoughts and. My anxiety was through the roof, like similar to you. That's something that kind of resonated with me when I was listening to your story. And um, man, I feel like if I didn't go through that year, probably wouldn't have put me in this position today. Like um, I'm, I'm grateful that I went through it because it definitely made me more resilient. And it makes me understand when I do come to a similar circumstance of hardship, I know how to kind of avoid it and kind of, you know, get around it. So, you know, it's, a, it's all a learning experience, I guess, but. Will I ever replace the feeling of running out to those fans? Probably not. That's the What's reality. What's that feeling like? It's the best in the world. What's like, it feeling like when you score a try? Best, like the, my wife would hate me to say this because obviously getting married was the best and having kids was the best feeling in the world. But <laughs> I was so, like, you know, like a, scoring and running out to the crowd cheering you, it's, uh, it's a, such a special feeling, man. It's, it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. Does anyone ever get hurt after you score a try? All the boys come and jump on everyone. Has I'm, anyone ever been injured? <laughs> because like if one of those if one of you your size boys jumped on me I'll be I'll be I, uh, I haven't seen it happen yet but I never say never do you ever no. get angry at boys jumping in like hey relax I love it I love it, I love love it. it. I'm the most uh, mate I louder the better louder the better I just yeah man it's the best in the world but would you want your kids to play football professionally NRL oh uh, I want them to do whatever they want to do in their life you know I'll definitely support them in in anything they do as a former athlete, former rugby league player, I would love them to pursue a career in sport. Um, yeah. But I don't want to put that expectation on my kids. It's just, it's not fair. It's not fair. So whatever they want to do in their life, I'll be supporting them all the way. And I'm, and I'm sure you're the same. I'll ask you this question. You can ask it back to me. What's the one thing that you wish you knew before you became a professional NRL football player? You could go back and just know one thing or tell yourself, that one thing, oh, like, yeah. yo, Josh. I got one. What? Never to get comfortable with yourself. No matter what you achieve, no matter what accolades you you receive, to never get comfortable with yourself. Always keep setting that bar high and keep chasing it. You, the worst thing you can do in all walks of life is get comfortable. In my opinion, I, I feel like you constantly need to get better in yourself. Um, keep being ambitious. Um, just never kick back and just, I don't know, like just. Just keep pursuing like goals. You know what I mean? Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Just, yeah. I, I feel like, yeah, definitely not get comfortable with yourself. Because there were times where, especially after my debut season, um, I had a pretty good year and I probably got a bit ahead of myself. I'm not going to lie. What do you mean, ego? Uh, I wouldn't say ego, but yeah, maybe it is a bit ego. Like I wasn't training as hard. Because um, you're like, I'm here. I'm doing yeah, it. Everyone knows me. Yeah. I'm owning it. 100%. Um, so probably comf being comfortable kind of started setting in. Um, so that's probably my biggest one. Like, just don't get ahead of yourself. Definitely. You? Okay. Yeah, I think ego for me is a big one. Like, I, I find that egos destroy people. I agree. Um, so that would probably be the biggest one. I'd always tell myself, like, Chris, just stay, no matter what you're doing, um, you know, stay grounded. Mm. And, you know, I look back sometimes at some of the things that I've done and I think to myself, Dang, you've done a lot and I'm glad that I've st I've stayed who I am. And I know that because people, my day ones, mm. my friends, my close ones, the guys that call me Kristen because that's my real name, they say, I'm glad we, have, we haven't changed, mate. You know, and that, that means a lot to me because egos destroy careers, not just as celebrities, I'm saying as a workplace, your boss, colleagues it's all about egos and hierarchy and when totally you can agree. just know what to do and how to handle someone's ego but also how to handle your ego mm. you know you can you can allow yourself to to go forward and also don't burn bridges yeah 100 you know, a lot of people burn bridges real quickly and I like, what goes around comes around 100 percent. i like how you brought up the ego part because that was one thing i wanted to always have was to never change no matter how big i got um to always give people the time the respect because I was one of those kids growing up and I idolized those football players, you 100%. know what I mean? And the time that some players gave me, yeah. that was invaluable. You meeting some of these kids when they were younger would be, the, I remember, I forget who it was. So one of the Dragons player came to my school at De La Salle Kingsgrove. I would have been nine years old. I don't think De La Salle Kingsgrove is still around. Doesn't it? They got rid of it. So the took over. The girls I, took over it. I was going to ask you, like, yeah, what players did you gravitate towards and admire at the Dragons at the time when you were supporting them? Um, 
Who did I have? Man, that, you would have had heaps. You would have had like Mark Gaznia, Matt Cooper. Ga- yeah, Cooper and Gaznia were amazing, the, I yes. felt. Um, the Morris Twins. Yeah, then he went to the Doggies. Ben Hornby. Um, who... Who did this every time they kicked? Mark Riddell. I love oh, Mark yeah, Riddell. Piggy. Every time he did that, man. Like, they were characters. I think characters in the game is so important as I agree. well. I agree. Um, no, he was a big forward and he came when he was, I was nine years old. Man, I know his name, but I just forget it right now. Anyway, I remember that till today, being nine, and he came to my school and I still remember him just passing the ball to me. Like, I remember that. And I remember catching it. So when you make those little moments for kids, yeah. I think it's so important. That's and special. I and I and I think for everybody, you know, we talk about celebs and all that. But again, I was at the Kings game, the Sydney Kings game recently, and there was a rapper sitting front row from the UK. He had a hoodie on, and Central C. Yeah, Central C. And I mean, a lot of kids wanted to take photos with him, and he wouldn't take photos with him. They, he would he refused to move. He had his security guard sitting next to us. And the security guard was like, no, no, he's not taking photos right now. Like you're in a setting of a basketball game in public. Just stand up for a quick moment and take it. Now saying that he took one photo as he exited, right? Four days later, I'm at the basketball game with Red Foo. Jay and I, uh, shoe grab, what up, got us the best courtside tickets, right? Red Foo from LMFO is a mate of mine. I know him. He's sitting eight, ro- eight, eight seats up that way. I watched Red Foo take, honestly, 400 photos, 400. And I said to Red Foo's wife afterwards, I said, this is why he has a career. The game had finished. Mm. The stadium had gone. He's still taking photos with fans. I love that. You know? I love that. And here's a guy that has got all the money in the world, doesn't need to work in his life. You know, his dad was the founder of Motown Records. I did not know that. Yeah. His dad founded Motown Records. He's had, I think, four number one hits. Yeah, well. And he's sitting there taking photos with everyone where, again, no disrespect to Central C, but he's a kid. You've just had your fame. What, you're about a year into your game and you're not taking photos with these fans of yours. Mm. So for me, I will never say no to a photo. And I always say that on my social media. You ever see me around? You come up and you ask me. I've got no issue. Mm. Because all this, if it was to go, that means my career's gone. That's true. That means everything else is gone. So count your blessings around you and don't have an ego. Our last guest, uh, Spencer Lenu, who just headed to the uh, Roosters, okay. uh, the new recruit. Yep. He left you a little message. Um, and uh, I'd like you to read it out and answer it, please. All right. You'd get the opportunity as well. For our next guest. So I open this up and I open it, it up. Okay. okay. You came to know what he wrote. All right. What do we got? Can Josh Mansour stop wearing such short shorts? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I just oh, yeah, 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 I'm just joking. Oh, <laughs> but how short? Can we get a? I don't oh. know. Can you just, 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 just get a little? Oh, can I be honest? I don't yeah. know why they're so short. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, the angle right now. I'll put I mean, him in the dryer once. This is like OnlyFans stuff <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm rattled now. You've lost me. Oh. Uh, okay, here we go. This is the real question. You've got me a beauty. If you could stop a crime forever but have to commit it once, what would it be? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> that is got to know how to answer that. Spencer, far out. Love so you'd that. stop a crime forever... But you have to commit one. Commit it. Is that right? Adultery? Oh, Jesus Christ. Is that when you cheat on your wife? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> your wife's going to chop your balls Tell me up. that's a good answer, though. <laughs> your, your wife's because, like, you be know, careful. Yeah, but you're saving, be very you're careful. saving millions of marriages. <laughs> you are. You are. It is, it is, Forever. You're sacrificing your so, own. And I know <laughs> my wife. My wife is, like, she's legit, like... No, she wouldn't like it. She's Mexican. Yeah. She's Spanish. She'll kill me. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Uh, scrap, that. Yeah. <laughs> scrap that. Scrap that one. Um, if you could stop a crime, but you have to commit. I don't want to. Well, I don't want to kill anyone here. Like, it's hard. It's wanna, a hard question. A, I don't know how to answer that. Do that one. That's a good question. Um, crime. Yeah. I know. I know what I would love to stop. But you know what I'll do? What? 
I'll steal your Rolex, so it never happen again. <laughs> <laughs> take it. Then you take the watch, and then you got it. Yeah, there you go. Take it. Take the Rolex. How about um, littering? Yeah, simple That's as that. a crime. Throwing out your rubbish out on the streets is yep. finable here, isn't it? Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I, I think it's a big. It's a big deal here. Yeah, okay. Oh, I, I, it's a big deal to me. All right, I, so I, I will. I will throw some trash, some rubbish on the street. I will get fined for it. I will take the punishment. Yes. But no one else will ever do it again. I like right? that. I like that a lot. Done. Oh, now, are you, you going to keep the adultery bit in there? No. <laughs> shit. You can, you can. I'm all right with it. I'm oh, right. We'll, have, we'll, have a, we'll have a look right. a bit later. Maybe yeah. change your mind. But now you got the opportunity to write a question for our next guest. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's under there. Yeah, there it's it here. is. Yep. You guys are such a well-prepared show, man. Thanks, this is uh, man. pretty crazy. It's Thank definitely you. a... Hopefully we get you back when you come back next year. <laughs> yeah, I'll come back. I'll do it again. Has it been okay? Have you enjoyed it? Oh, I'm loving it. You guys ever used AI? I use AI. Now. You're not doing chat. No, you're no, not, no, not doing chat. Let me just GPT. ask. Let me ask what, what AI asks. Let me just see what AI's question would have been. I actually haven't heard about okay, AI. Asked. I'm on a podcast, oh, this is... and they have asked me to provide one question for their next. Guests, yeah. can I can I say how scary this world's turning into? Like, oh, it's pretty crazy. That. What personal challenges or obstacles have you faced in your athletic journey, and how have they shaped? Nah, that's boring. Yeah, very broad. Nah, yeah, very. Was, yeah, yeah nah. Nah, see, right. you can't trust AI, yeah, brother. AI, yeah, yeah. AI doesn't have a heart. Yeah, you do. Yeah, true, true. Okay, <laughs> all right. So now, it's all done. It's done in there for your next guest. I can't wait. It's a good one. It's a good one. Wait. I think. So you're heading back to Dubai next week. Back to the family. Back to Dubai, yep, go back and I'll take my daughters back. I've brought my daughters here to Sydney, so I've got my, my new son waiting for me back home. God bless. Uh, miss him, man. Miss him, miss him and the wifey already. It's crazy. I didn't, I didn't, I don't know. It's just, it's harder to stay away from your, your loved ones, you know, so. 100%. I totally agree. And what, what do you got coming up? Anything? Uh, there's a lot, man. Obviously, go back onto the radio show, which is good. Just building Fade Fit, which is, you know, something that I've got some goals that I want to achieve this year. And one of them is to get Fade Fit into Australia. Um, we came we came pretty close last year, but I've realised we've got to do a few little things differently for the Australian market. Yep. So um, you know, just just kicking goals, man. Keep going, just keep pushing forward. Um, I want to I want to I want to be happy though. I want to I want to remain happy. I think you know one of the hardest things that I think a lot of us do we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. So I want to sort of release that pressure pressure and just realise like you know Chris you you've done well, everything's good as long as you got your health. Um, you know, count those blessings every day and just enjoy it. So excited to get back and, uh, you know, do 2024 a, a good way. But I'm looking forward to catching up with you when I head to Dubai. I'm sure I've got my own tour guide with me, which is okay. the one and only voice yeah, of Dubai. I'll, I will take you out and about. <laughs> um, I'll have my driver, though, pick you up and probably take you places <laughs> sometimes. I'll be busy. but uh, I'd appreciate that. But, uh, yeah, we'll look after you. We can't wait to get you there. And I'm looking forward to going to dinner. I don't know how much we've got to talk about because we pretty much spoke about <laughs> a lot now. We went over. We went over, but that's good. That's good. Thanks for coming on the show, brother. Appreciate it. Um, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Shoe grab as well. Thank you, guys. Uh, Jay and the team. You guys are now like family as you are, Source, and uh, appreciate it. And I can't wait to come back next time. Beautiful. Thank you, man.